Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. As part of the solutions to Nigeria's security challenges, former President Olusegun Obasanjo, in his letter to the President on Security, advised the government to open up discussions, debate, and dialogue as part of consultation at different levels, and that the outcome of such deliberations should be collated to form input into a national conference to come up with the solutions that would effectively deal with the issues and lead to rapid development, growth, and progress, which will give us a wholesome society and enhance living standards and livelihood in an inclusive and shared society. Joining us now to contribute his, his piece to this discussion is security analyst and journalist, Senator Iroegbu. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you, good morning. Good morning. Um, this week saw an open letter from former President Abbasanjo to the current president. As someone that has been, that is at the center and also that has done security um, analysis, first of all, my first question to you is, has the Nigerian security situation ever been this dismal? Um. Nigerian security situation is not um, where it should be. In fact, um, uh, it's not something to be proud of right now. Uh, but whether uh, the security agencies are doing something, uh, they are doing something. But w if what they are doing is enough, it's not enough. So generally, there is a kind of a general feeling of insecurity across the country, and the, the whole uh, country is tensed and uh, seems unsafe. So it's not something that any concerned Nigerian should be, you know, proud of or feel relaxed. So that's why everyone, every stakeholder or those who, you know, have the future of this country at heart, it's time to speak up or offer solution or suggestion or recommendation in whatever capacity you can. So let's look at some of those recommendations. Mm -hmm. Former President Goodluck Jonathan suggested that the federal government should approach the security situation the way he did regarding, or well, PDP did, regarding corruption by setting up independent institutions, EFCC and ICPC, that there should be a body set up to tackle banditry and kidnapping. What's your take on that? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I don't want to be. I don't want security issue to be muddled up with uh, uh, politics. When it comes to security, it should be as blind as possible to politics. That's why government is continuum, irrespective of which party. But he's right in trying to give um, direction on which the current government should follow, irrespective of whether it's PDP or APC. That's why if, if you check in every country, in US, in UK, in some of the country we try to, with, with, we are, uh, try to meet up with their standard. When it comes to security issues, you see both um, parties, you know, do away with their, their party differences and come together to deal with it. So his suggestion, that I think from what I'm, I want to get from what he suggested is that it is high time government take a holistic and critical look to a security situation and set up necessary infrastructure, necessary uh, institutions, necessary um, process and procedures or program that will help to ensure a sustainable solution to this. I think that's where uh, what I'm getting from that particular issue you raised now, irrespective whether it's from PDP. Because what I'm saying this is that in this climb, it seems as if, okay, since it's APC, they don't want to see anything good from PDP. Or if it's PDP, they don't think APC can do anything good. That's why as much as possible, I try to play down the issue of party so that we focus entirely on security because it's blind whether you're PDP or APC, whether you're supporting any party. It's Nigerian, uh, Nigerian life that at stake. When it comes to security, it does not recognize which party you belong or which ethnic group or religion you belong. Everyone is at stake. 
everyone's life is threatened in Nigeria. Thank you for that. Um, I do want to bring something to your attention. One of the things you said is that so, um, politics and security should not be linked. Unfortunately, they are quite linked. And one of the reasons why President Buhari won his first term was because he did promise to, ma to um, wipe out Boko Haram. And therefore, security and politics is always going to be linked. So I think that we shouldn't try to say we're separating them. I think the solution should be blind. But I want to talk to you about one of the points that um, Abbas yeah, Sanjo wrote great. in his yeah, letter. Yes. Solution should be blind, yeah. yes. One of, the, one of the things okay. he wrote in his letter, which is that Nigeria is on the precipice of having a Rwanda-like crisis, which is the genocide. Can you let me know what that does to you when you hear something or read something like that? I have to say, when I read something like that, it made the hair on the back of my neck stand. And really, it, that, those are, that's rhetoric that tends to, um, to make the world afraid. As some, I mean, what do you say to that rhetoric and what do you say to that statement? How do you respond to that? I think is uh, you're just saying, since because of his position, he's just louding what most people have been saying in their bedroom or have been hushing or trying to warn, you know, in various ways. People have raised this issue. I think um, he is not concluding that this is, is going to be the fate of Nigeria. He is saying that if, with the way things are going, if actions are, are not carried out, if, if it's not being addressed, you know, in a proper way, it is. Look at, God forbid, look at what happened. Look at the way it's likely going to be if nothing is being done. But I'm sure, you know, we, we, in this climb, we normally call God God as if we, we are the only one that knows how to pray to God. But I, I, I'm hopeful that God will not allow such to come. But what is the import of that warning is that things are getting out of hand. You know, there is a ethnic profiling, ethnic entrenchment. Everybody is digging in, uh, digging trenches. Everyone is taking extreme measures. People are not willing to listen to one another or come to a compromise or actually listen to what is, why are these sides saying this and why are these sides saying this? Because I'm listening from, uh, to both sides of the divide. Everyone seems to be entrenched. No one seems to care to listen to what the other is saying. So, and this is dangerous when you come to, in this kind of situation. And this is where government is supposed to step in because when it comes to government, it's like a, an elected umpire, a referee, someone who's supposed to, an institute that's supposed to be objective and neutral and looking at the citizen as one, looking at the country as your single constituents, which are looking whether 97% or 5% analogy, look at the whole country, then look at the sensitivities of each different region and know how you can tackle it putting these different interests, you have to marry them together and know what will work. Sometimes what works for A may not work for B, but they try to how to reach middle ground in order to let each person not go empty handed or not, uh, you know, you may not have all what you want, but you will not go entirely empty handed. That's how you deal with this issue. I think that's what Obasanya is trying to warn because the rhetoric already is, is high from both sides. And he's saying, he's raising the alarm. See, there is a moving train. If you don't remove people from the road, this is what is going to happen. So there is going to be a collision. So, so are you you're like highlighting the ethno religious tension that exists in the society at the moment. Are you concerned at all that the president's response to President Obasanjo's letter and other criticisms of the way security has been managed at the moment was to dismiss such people as unpatriotic? I think that is where uh, this government has been getting it wrong all along. And they keep on raising the tempo. When you dismiss people anytime See, 
democracy, one of the hallmark of democracy is tolerance of criticism, tolerance of opposition. In fact, most times what even threatens governance is opposition. You can't have oh yes member in every and think you can get because nobody is infallible, no government is infallible. No government is perfect. And that's why you need people from the other side who can look at it dispassionately and tell you the truth. Because when someone is inside a house already, he may not know that son or Ren is beating the other person. So it's left for those who are outside to, looking inside to tell you, look at what is happening. So I've seen this pattern of those who raise objection genuinely to say, see, what is happening, what is going wrong, see how you are going to, they are giving, they are labeled unpatriotic, wellers, um, disgruntled. And things are getting worse. If you don't want to call people disgruntled, make things perfect so that people will stop complaining. So it's, you don't solve a situation by dismissing every um, kind of criticism or solution. Because if you have done things right, people won't be complaining. So uh, dismissing this Obasanjo uh, uh, statement, or those who have been complaining, be it uh, under any name, is it Afani Ferizi or Hanese, or individuals who have spoken, dismissing is not the best way. I think the government should start listening, you know, because the way the policy, the Ruga itself, was being implemented is what stuck up this issue. So government should not should stop implementing policies in a way that stoke up tension or touch on the nerve of our fault lines. In every country there are fault lines. You don't the government begin to stoke up those in areas that divide us further. In your language, in your attitude, well, in action. Thank you so much sir. Should be seen to be Yes. Thank you so much. Well, we'll have to Thank have you. you back as we keep on tracking this story. Thank you so much for being on the show this morning and for your addition to this conversation.